Welcome back to the X Corner. I'm here to add a little mutation to the superhero crew. Now in the new 2018 flavor. I'll be covering the X Comics for the week of January 3rd, 2018. This week, making up for the short week for the holidays, we have six comics and a single page from a comic. Astonishing X-Men number 7, Iceman number 9, Phoenix Resurrection, The Return of Jean Grey number 2, Rogue and Gambit number 1, X-Men Gold number 19, and X-Men Grand Design number 2, along with that Wolverine page from Captain America 697. Spoilers, of course. We'll start with Astonishing X-Men number 7. Writer, Charles Soule, and penciler, Phil Noto. This one is a biggie. We left off last time with Xavier back from the dead calling himself X and a bunch of psychically controlled people running amok in London. Here we have in the first few pages X cure Archangel so that he has Warren's personality again, Archangel stopping a bomb that the UK government were going to use to stop their psychic infection, and X curing all the people of the infection by drawing it out of them, while also mind wiping the government so that they wouldn't remember the X-Men were there. The X-Men are understandably skeptical of the resurrected Xavier and Psylocke goes into the astral plane to talk to the now-trapped forever Phantom X. He says he was happy to give up his life out there, which amounted to nothing, to free Xavier. He seems happy to be rebuilding the astral plane after the Shadow King trashed it. Before the X-Men could get to grips with everything, the psychic power X was drawing out of the people coalesces into Proteus, and Bishop is warned by his time-displaced computer of something called the Mind Killer Apocalypse. Crazy stuff. This comic has gone from tertiary series to THE X-Book. They aren't screwing around here. Phil Noto is one of my favorite artists and it's nice to see him here do some interiors. And it seems he hasn't done that in a while. His style is so clean and beautiful. And there's also a great callback to the last issue where the newly cured Archangel flies up on Gambit and Old Man Logan. And they think he's going to destroy them again. But Warren just tells them to chill out. The writing is good generally, but there is a sense that Phantom X was just written out of the whole story. But I'll reserve my judgment, because that might be part of it. Is X good? He seems very creepy. Proteus is from one of my all-time favorite X-Men arcs, so it's cool to see him back. It should be interesting to see how it all pans out. 9 out of 10. Next we have Iceman number 9. Writer, Cena Grace. Penciler, Robert Gill. In the Apocalypse Seed, Part 1, the X-Men throw a going-away party for Iceman, who's moving to L.A., and Dakin crashes, causing havoc. He has his sidekick, Amp, release the Apocalypse Seed within him. It's the thing that brought him back to life after Wolverine killed him. And he turns all undeady and stabs Bobby's boyfriend through the back, out the front. Iceman doesn't take this well, and they fight. The story starts off with a crowd scene where unfortunately I couldn't tell who was who. Someone was hitting on Bobby, and I only realized it was Richter when he mentioned his name. There were students from the school who were all so generically drawn, I couldn't tell who they were. The fight scenes were fun, but overall this wasn't up to the quality I expect from Iceman. I think Grey should stick to the relationship drama and less with the superheroing. Notice I didn't even mention once the fact that Editorial dropped the continuity ball with Dakin. Not even once. This comic has been cancelled, so I assume we'll get a quick wrap up of this story. But sadly, I'm glad we aren't getting more like this. Iceman issues 1-8 to eight are a good read for a superhero dealing with coming out to his friends and family. It's like this issue was written by a different person. I'll give it only a 5 out of 10, unfortunately. Then we have got Phoenix Resurrection, The Return of Jean Grey, number 2. For a second week in a row. Damn you weekly books. The writer is Matthew Rosenberg, and the penciler is Carlos Pacheco. This story continues with following the waitress Jean, who is having nightmares of dying on the moon, and keeps meeting people she thinks she knows. She even has a patron in her diner, named Eric, who can bend spoons with his mind. Meanwhile, the X-Men are at a loss. Most of their psychics are missing thanks to the events over in the Jean Grey comic, so they have to resort to using Cable to try and track the Phoenix with Cerebro. This doesn't go well and Cable is zapped too. They decide to split into teams to go where the Phoenix might show up. Old Man Logan sums it up best when he says nobody said Jean was back, but there sure as hell is a giant flaming bird running around. Most of the teams find nothing, but Iceman's team finds Magneto, but he's wearing his old costume. A fight ensues, and halfway through he orders a coffee from Gene. He's in two places at once. New Wolverine Laura puts a foot cloth through Magneto's head, and he disappears. We jump back to the diner with Gene and Magneto. He says he just popped outside because he thought he saw people he knew. Gene looks out the window to see a vision of the Phoenix burning everything to the ground. 
This story continues to confuse, but in the most enjoyable way. The quick references to Jamie Madrex, the multiple man, who is cutting Gene's lawn, and seems to be able to be in lots of different places at once. To Eric saying he was friends of Gene's old teacher, and she says, Mr. Claremont? Then they show a team consisting of Shatterstar, Dazzler, Pixie, and Strong Guy, and I'm in 100% for that series. This miniseries has been an X-Men fan's dream, and I'm flabbergasted how much I love it. I take it back. I can't wait for next week's issue number 3. Rating, 9 out of 10. Now for another new miniseries, Rogue and Gambit number one of five. The writer is Kelly Thompson and the penciler is Harry Perez. This mini pairs the on-again, off-again Rogue and Gambit in a rom-com with action twists. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith with mutants. Kitty forces Rogue to team with her ex Gambit on a mission to a mutant couple therapy resort to find out why mutants seem to be disappearing from there. There's a great scene where Rogue asks Kitty why her and Colossus aren't going and she tells her it's the perk of being in charge. The two make it to the island, where they meet their overly friendly neighbors, before going to their first session, where they are immediately strapped to a bed. This is another fun romantic comedy series, much like Iceman was at times. And even though I hate Gambit, I love the nostalgia of these two as a couple. There's a discussion on the plane about Rogue kissing Deadpool that is hilarious. So far the story is fun and intriguing, and the art is nice. Paris gets Rogue's facial expressions down to a T. I also yet another comic this week with Pixie in it. She's making a return, I could feel it. The only strike against this comic is Gambit. Oh, how I hate Gambit. Overall though, I think it'll be a fun read. It's nice to see a miniseries well written, and not just for a cash grab. Rating, 8 out of 10. Next is X-Men Gold number 19. Writer, Mark Guggenheim, penciler, Lan Medina. The Negative Zone War continues here as the X-Men face the resurrected god and the megalomaniac general who released him to destroy the world. The X-Men go off to fight the god and Kitty sends Wolverine off to finish the general, which he does with amazing aplomb. They realize quick they can't beat the god, so Kitty hatches a plan. She steals the spaceship and uses her phasing powers to snare the god through the center of his torso. They then tow him out to space and then dump him in a black hole. This ruins their ship, of course, and they crash into the planet, but at least they defeated their enemies. Guggenheim has these characters' voices down. You feel for them all. Old Man Logan especially shines in the first half of the book. From him saying that God doesn't look so tough, to him cheap-shotting the bad guy, as he monologued. Right up until he put his six claws through the baddie's head. Logan is the man in this comic. Kitty's plan to defeat the God was fun too. They set up that he was turned to stone before, so you expect them to try and figure out how that was done. But instead, Kitty uses her powers in such an inventive way to beat him. As always, X-Men Gold shines for me, so I refuse to say anything bad about it. It might even have been a 10, but no Pixie, so it gets a 9 out of 10. Next, we have what I thought was the final issue of X-Men Grand Design with number 2, but more on that later. The writer and penciler is Ed Pisker. This book follows the X-Men through their actual comic up until the series went to reruns before being cancelled and brought back for the all-new, all-different X-Men. Pisker hits all the highlights of the X-Men as they meet and battle their now infamous rogues gallery as well as weaving in an overall narrative of the coming of the Phoenix and aliens trying to find out who it will choose as its host so that they can control it. Also, Magneto has his fingers in quite a few pies, including sending Namor off to cause trouble for the Fantastic Four. And Mastermind starts to mess with Jean's head, which will come up later in the Dark Phoenix Saga. The endnotes help place everything in context, and once again, it is a good catch-up for a new fan. This issue, however, I had less for long-term fans who already know the early X-Men stories. There's a little addition, but it keeps mostly to the history, and thus I didn't get much out of it, as I would have liked to. The end page does promise the continuation in late 2018 of the Grand Design into the second team, so I can't wait to see how he handles that. Rating, only 6 out of 10. Lastly, we have the backup Wolverine page from Captain America 697. The writer is Mark Wade and the penciler is Lineal Francis Yu. The cover to Captain America 697 teases us with a small stamp saying where is Wolverine and promises a backup story. This is literally a single page at the back of the book. The OG, back from the dead with an infinity gem Wolverine, goes into the bar where Cap started his adventure in this issue looking for him. And that's it. Will Wolverine be in further issues of the comic? Will we get more than a single page? Is this just a cheap gimmick to sell more issues? Who knows. The art was good. And it's nice to see the cowboy hat wearing Wolvie back. But there isn't much to go on here. I'm not even going to bother rating it. 
Overall, I'd say it's a great week. Grand design wasn't bad, just not for me, and that Wolverine backup was nothing. But overall, I love that the X-Men comics currently don't seem to be falling into the trap of crossoveritis or cheap cameos. Let's hope now that the movies are back in the Marvel fold, we don't see a shift back to trying to sell the X-Men. This should be a breeding ground for good stories to make movies about, not just a secondary media source from the movies to try and eke out more cash from people wanting mindless entertainment. One can only hope. See you next week.